Brown and Sharp Automatic Screw Machine Operator Training Program. Lesson number six, lead and cross slide cam replacement. As an operator, you will be responsible for mounting the turret and cross slide cams. This television training tape will give you the information you need to perform these tasks. This is a turret or lead cam. A roller passing over these surfaces causes the turret to move in and out during the machining cycle. This is the approach portion. The tool moves quickly toward the rotating bar stock during this portion of the cam. This is low point. The tool is about to cut into the bar of stock. Actual machining occurs during the feed portion on the cam. At high point or dwell, the tools are allowed to finish their cut before they are withdrawn and index occurs. The rise of a cam is the vertical distance between low point and high point. This is the locating hole. It enables you to locate the cam properly on the camshaft. The layout sheet contains information about the sequence of events involved in producing one part. The lead cam may be stamped with these operations at the point on the cam at which they are to occur. The timing of each cutting operation can be seen. The cam circle is divided up into 100 segments. The locating hole is always the zero point or starting point. Each operation is indicated in one hundredths of cam rotation. For example, the stock feeding operation occurs here between zero and three. Indexing of the turret takes three hundredths of cam surface. It occurs between three and six. The layout sheet will show the numbers of hundredths each operation will take and will enable you to properly set up cams, trip dogs, and tools. To remove a lead cam, loosen the holding nut with a wrench. Once the nut is removed, use a lever to raise the cam roller from the cam. The cam can now be removed. Lead cams can be put on backwards. Check carefully when replacing the cam. Note the direction of cam rotation. The top of the cam will be coming toward you during normal operation. Be sure the low point of the cam lobes contacts the rollers first. Tighten the nut securely once the cam has been replaced. Your layout sheet may indicate the distance the turret should be from the spindle at the high point of one operation. In this example, the turret should be adjusted to be 5 and 1 8 inches from the spindle when the cam roller is at the top of the first stop lobe. and crank the machine to the high point of the lobe indicated. Loosen the locking nut on the turret slide adjusting screw. Adjust the screw for the correct dimension. The front and rear cross slide cams are located here on the double op machine. The cross slide cams for the number two model machine are located here. The vertical slide cams are mounted here. This is the cross slide adjusting nut. The purpose of the cross slide adjusting nut is to set the depth to which the tool will feed into the bar stock. This is the positive stop screw. The purpose of the positive stop screw is to provide tension on the cross slide operating mechanism to ensure the slide always stops at exactly the same point in each cutting stroke.
Before removing cams, back off the cross slide adjusting nut and the positive stop screw. To remove the cross slide cams, you must first loosen this set screw. The collar can now be slid to the right. With a wrench, you can now loosen the locking nut and remove the spacer. Now raise the cam lever. The cam can now be pulled off from its locating pin. The other half of the cam holder can now be removed. Before replacing cams, be sure all dirt, chips, and sludge are removed. The adjustable cam holders used have a zero point marked on both halves. Be sure to align the zeros when replacing the holder. This ensures the locating pin is at the proper location. The spacer has a key which must be aligned with the keyway on the shaft when replacing it. Once the locking nut is secure, slide the collar back into place and tighten the set screw. Cams for the rear cross slide should be marked. The turret trip dogs can now be set to index the turret at the proper point in the cycle. Hand crank the machine to the end of a lobe on the lead cam. The turret dog carrier for the double op machine is located here. Loosen the trip dog locking nut. Slide the trip dog in the slot until it contacts the trip lever. Tighten the locking nut securely. Repeat this same procedure for all other index points on the cam. Alternate between both sides of the dog carrier. The stock feed trip dog carrier is located here. If your setup is using a turret mounted stock stop, there will be a lobe on the lead cam for the stock feed portion of the cycle. Hand crank the machine so the roller is on the top of this lobe. Now set the trip dog to cause the feed out to occur. On setups that require swing stops, you will need to check your layout sheet to properly set the trip dog for stock feeding. Other trip dogs for spindle reversing and speed changes can also be set at this time. This completes your tape on the lead and cross slide cam replacement. You may watch this tape as many times as you need. When you have finished watching this tape, return to the operator booklet for your next step.